Hey, 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 everyone. Deb here from Deb Studio. And even though I've already done this once, I did it mixing the water mix with oil and the acrylic paints. And this was the result. So it's not exactly a failure, but it's not exactly a success either. And I'll have clips inserted from where I was painting that. And toward the end, I'll explain why I'm going to go strictly with watercolor, water mixable oils. Um, and then I actually did find a shade that I can get to the colors I need. The only color I didn't need in this particular skin tone was Naples yellow, but I can mix that with some cadmium orange, yellow ochre, and some white. And then in this painting, the colors listed are alizarin crimson, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cerulean blue, Naples yellow, raw sienna, titanium white, and breeding green. But going through it, um, and looking at the color mixes, I did not need the, um, I don't need the burnt sienna because there's only one mixture that calls for burnt sienna and I don't anticipate having to mix that up. All right, so I've got my colors laid out here on my palette. My yellow ochre and my cadmium orange are over here because that's what I'm going to use to mix my Naples yellow. And then my other colors here are laid out. Um, the raw sienna, burnt umber, or lizard crimson, white, this is coral and blue in place of the cerulean blue, of radiant green. Okay, and I already went ahead and I traced out the subject onto the background. And I know I said I was going to do the background in rose gold and regular gold, but when I was doing the painting on the rose gold, the subject went to the subject blended in with the background and that just that wasn't going to do. So at any rate, I started over with a different background on this painting. I still am using rose gold. It was mixed with some white and then a little bit of cadmium red to do this one. And I don't really call this a failure per se, but we are going to periodically look at this particular painting to see how well it's going to stay bound to the canvas and then also how well the paint's going to remain bound, whether or not it's going to crack or anything like that. Okay, so now the way that I traced out my subject onto my canvas is I took my tracing that I did in my hand, I rubbed chalk over the lines and then I taped it down on here and traced it out. That's what we did. All right, so the first thing, actually first, I need to thank you for joining me. I uh, really do appreciate that. For encouragement, if you could give me a thumbs up. And then if you wanna follow along on this journey of mine, please subscribe to my channel. I do hope at a later time that I will do a painting where I am using both water mixable oil and acrylic paints. It's just doing portraits. It's not a good idea because the acrylic properties, they dry faster than the oil. So once you've got the paint mixed, you need to use it before that acrylic gets completely dry. I mean, you've got a longer time to work with it, but still the acrylic is going to start to dry before the oil is, and then the oil or the acrylic starts separating from the oil. You'll see that in the clips. I'll show you an example of that. And I will say one thing, the reason why water mixable oil and acrylic doesn't mix, if you've noticed here, this is already starting to dry. So you've got to work with it. Yeah, it's, yeah, the, the acrylic binder and the oil binder have actually separated here in this, in my master mix. So, uh, I was thinking adding more oil would help keep it from drying out, but it didn't. It's not the greatest. I mean, it doesn't look half bad. I'm happy with the blending. I really am happy with the blending. We'll look at this one next week to see how well it's going to stay together. Uh, and not to mention, like I said, I cannot go from one day to the next unless I only use the oil. All right, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to get the colors mixed up that we're going to need. I'm going to go ahead and mix up my Naples yellow because I do need that for several of the mixes. Actually, it's in the master mix. No, it's not. Sorry. Alizarin crimson, raw sienna, and white are in the master mix. All right, everyone. Welcome back. So, I went ahead and I pre-mixed... Dog on. Sorry about that. I went ahead and I mixed up all the colors I was going to need because this really did take a long time to do. So, let's go ahead here and get started. Okay, so now that we're back to a point where I can actually start painting, for some reason there's a lot of hair in my studio today. I don't know, maybe Tigger's shedding or something, who knows. Okay. So, what I was saying at the beginning here is I'm going to outline my subject in a darker color. Um, let's see. Is this one? And I'm primarily only going to be using a couple of brushes, so we're going to get all these little bad boys here out of the way. I don't need those. I don't need the ink pen. Hopefully I won't need the gloves. Get this over here and 
We'll get going. I do have my reference photo pulled up. And let's get going, guys. So, I am using a water mixable oil, so that means I don't have to have any uh, turpentine or anything for a thinner. I can use the oil or I can use water. Or it's so much better to use a medium. So, typically, what you would do is you would go ahead and mix the medium in with your colors. That bad boy was really hard to get off. <laughs> wow. Of all the things that could go wrong, it's going wrong, guys. I'm just, I'm having a day. I had a day yesterday because, well, yesterday was, that's what I'm going to do with that one. Uh, having so many issues with the battery, my SD cards, whatever. So, when I first started this today, the battery was fully charged. And I went ahead and I just put a new SD card in the camera. So I don't have to worry about running out of space like I did yesterday and didn't even realize it. I thought my camera was, I thought my battery was running out and it wasn't. So it was the SD card. All right, so I have creases right here in my thumb. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. And then like I said earlier, I had a lot of problems. Tigger, stop. Don't frown with me. Mom's working, stop. Tigger. Sorry guys, I had to go get my cat. He was into stuff. All right, so before I got interrupted by the studio supervisor, what I was saying is I had a lot of issues yesterday getting my knuckles in on this index finger. So I'm going to try to go ahead and make the indications for those which those it'll probably be about the darkest part of the painting and oh boy i'll be able to get the knuckle this time so there's actually two there's one in this area and then there is one right in here okay and then of course on the thumb we have this knuckle here which that one didn't give me hardly any trouble but then basically all it is is just the creases in the thumb to show us where the thumb bent. So I've got that marked out for my index finger and hopefully that'll help out. One can only hope. So all I can do is hope. Okay. So, being as I'm using a skin tone that's quite a bit lighter than the first one I tried to use. Yeah, it is quite a bit lighter. I'm gonna have to readjust for the red or the pinkish tones that I was seeing in my fingers. Well, why am I adding it there? I need it here. We've got enough over there. Is that I probably should have mentioned? You want to be careful how much oil you're putting in here. I can't remember what the ratio is. Um, but yeah, I've got that really thin now, so that's probably that could almost be used as a glaze. So, and let's get the oil mixed in on this one since we're going to be working with the darks first. And this medium just helps the paint glide. It's just like an acrylic paint and using a um, golden glazing liquid, glazing medium, golden gloss glaze medium, something like that. That's in the acrylic, but for oils. And you want to be careful. If you're using water mixable oils, you want to get a medium that's for water mixable oils. There is a difference. Um, because if you go and get a medium that's for regular oils, then you're going to have to wash, you can't wash your brushes out with soap and water, you're going to have to use turpentine because the mediums as well as the paints are specially formulated to be washable with water. Okay, so to find our darkest areas, which I have under here. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and I know I said I was going to stick in this row, but I, I'm going to go with this as well. And also, um, this arm is just going to fade out down here. 
And yeah, that's so much darker. That's going to be, wow, it's going to take some getting used to. Okay, so. I'm really scrubbing this paint in. I think what we're going to do here, we're going to put some of this in there too. Alright, I've got a light area in here, so I'm going to be careful. Dark area here, dark area here. Um, the darkest area is going to be for the knuckle. So, let's see. Let's use this. This one. Lord, I don't want to lose that knuckle. I just don't want to lose that knuckle. I'm afraid I will. Okay. This back finger is a lot darker than the index finger. But they're real close. Okay. And I don't cover this with my white. Here we go. Okay. So, the top of the thumb here, what I call the top, is dark. Okay, this is a lot of light. Now the pinky finger, surprisingly, has got dark at the bottom and at the top of it. And that's because with the position of the hands, the pinky was actually in shadow of these fingers here. I hope I'm on camera for that. I think I need to go down in my smaller brush now. This looks extremely weird, guys. It looks weird to me. But it worked out yesterday, so I'm hoping it'll work out today. Otherwise, yeah. Oops. Don't call it. Okay. So I need to get this done down here. So let's go. Yeah, I got a little light area in here. Let me get my light in my big areas. Which. Wow, that's a big difference. But that's why I wanted to use the oil because we can blend between the two colors. And this is such an odd skin tone. Wow. Okay. And I'll show you here. You can see already when I reach up into this darker color and pull down, it actually blends in with the light color that I'm trying to get down. So, it actually requires me to have to wipe my brush off to get the dark color off the brush. Okay. This is actually dark in here, so we'll leave that alone. notice as you are so each time I'm not looking too bad so far I guess we'll see we'll keep going I'm determined to get this done today I've got to get it done today, and I just have to. Okay. Now, I haven't even gotten a mid tone in here yet. I'm just getting my light and my dark so far. Okay, I'm going to leave that loose for a little bit. And then try to get in the fingers here. I got way too much oil medium in my paint. Okay. So, let's get some light. And, 
right hand here. Now on my fingers here, I had to go back and forth a lot um, to get it blended out right because I actually see a lot of red in my fingers. Um, the closest thing I have to maybe the red I'm seeing is probably this one. So, hopefully, you'll see. And then brush stroke is really important. Oh, that's blending out really good, so that's not bad. Turn this a different way. All right, yeah, so that looks so. With that color that I used to sketch this out, it's actually blending in, and that's that's the properties of oils. You wouldn't be able to do this with acrylic unless, of course, you were super fast. I am not super fast. Okay, that doesn't look that bad, honestly. Okay, so let's get this next finger down. This one first. I'm hoping you can see the paint that I've got here and where I'm reaching to get paint. I don't have a whole heck of a lot of space here and it's really hard to learn or keep up with where my boundaries are. Paint on the brush. See right now, I need to get a new paper down here real soon. Okay. Don't be afraid to turn your canvas, guys, especially if it's a really small canvas. It's so much easier to work, it's easier on you, it stress out. light into this finger eventually and I'm losing my dark in there so light and then this outline also helps in separating where these fingers meet the index finger here so that's a nice thing about the outline because in areas where it's really light in the photograph it's like the fingers almost blend together and there's just a very faint outline to let you know where one finger ends and the other one begins okay um, i just dipped in and got a little bit of water here guys and I know there was somebody who done a video about water mixable oils. They were kind of experimenting with them because there was some of his followers were curious about them, so he did an experiment. And I'm really not having too much of an issue here getting the water to mix in with the paint, but then I am dipping the brush in the water and then picking up the paint. So that might be what the difference is. He was actually taking a little bit of water, a few drops like he would with the medium and dropping it in. And yes, you've really got to mix, 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 mix to get the water incorporated with paint. Um, but so far I'm not having that issue. Uh -huh. But it is much easier to use the medium guys, I'm telling you, so much easier. Okay. On this finger, I've got a lot of dark that comes up in. I need to capture that. So, let's get that in. And it is dark too. 
ketchup. This is so odd. This color is just... I was really good with the other one I did and that's because it was so close to my natural skin tone and this just looks so unnatural to me even though I'm sure this skin tone exists. But it's just really, really odd to me. Now, something I will say or tell you about these two dark colors. When I was mixing them, I had to use some Viridian green and some of the Coriolan blue. And that's because those are green colors and anything that's in shadow will typically be grayed out. Okay, so I've got... Okay, so I have a crease like in here that I've got to grab and get that in. And it's really faint right in here and it gets dark. And then I've got light, right? I can go around like this. Okay. And then one like here. Is when you go up into one color, when you pull down that second time, you pull that color you just went in into it. Okay. A lot of light here, guys. this crease in. And that one. The next one up. Okay. And then the next one up is... Okay, this is where I got confused the last time. The smaller one right here. Yeah. Okay. So we're on that. And then this one you just barely see. Oh, it's new. That part, this part, this part, this part, and this part. Wow. That looks like I have too many sections of my hand. One, two, three, four. And if you count that from here to here, it's five. One, two, three, four. And then the thumb part is five. Okay. I'm good. Now I've got to get more light in for my knuckles. Back of the hand. So, got. Blends in with this down here. Ah, come on now. And a little bit of the light here. much of this light paint made up and we need quite a bit of it. Okay. Huh. 
Okay guys, so my camera, it needed a break, so I gave it a break. Charged up the battery, took the opportunity to actually mix up some more of this white color that I'm needing. And I think we're ready to go back at it. So, let's see. Yeah, see some of this is already drying. Oh. Except for what actually had quite a bit of oil mixed into it, so... This color here that's got a lot of oil in it, it's actually still pretty wet. So that's another thing the safflower oil does too, is it slows the drying and it's suitable for pale colors. So it, what it means by that is it's suitable for pale colors is that it's not gonna alter the color or darken a light color. That's what I'm assuming anyways. All right, so let's keep going here. Let's study this a little bit. I think I'm needing to go into my mid tone. So let me, I don't think I have yet. Well, I'll well, mix that up in a minute. Right now I'm gonna grab this because I really don't wanna waste that much paint. All right. mixed in with the dark a little bit, like in the dark of the scotch, because it just looks too dark. I've never been this dark. Hey. Never had that kind of a tan. I think the closest I ever got when I went to the tan bed. But I, I, I would have to go, like, regularly, because it would fade so quick. this line so <laughs> well of course you can dev it's oil that's what it does <laughs> that's so cool just a couple of strokes guys and it's wow okay uh, just kind of yeah gets me so we're <laughs> gonna So cool how that just blended right together. Okay, let's see here. I'm thinking this color, yeah, that color is this color. So that was actually my mid tone in there. I'm gonna have to get a darker color. Now, this is what I was talking about when I mentioned earlier about um, I went back and forth between the lights and the darks. So I go in with the dark, pull it down. Then go back in with the light, pull it in, and back to the dark. Which, I mean, is not such a bad thing, because you can do it with oils. You can't do that with acrylics. I mean, you get a little bit of blending time, but not a whole lot. I mean, unless you really know what you're doing. And I'm still, I'm still learning. All right, so this. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. Gradually gets a little darker. I don't want to go dark, dark. And see, because these colors are not close to my skin tone, I'm having a really hard time.
sorry I've gotten so quiet, y'all. I'm just concentrating here. Kind of lost in my own world, I guess. See, that's too dark. So, let's do this. Okay, I'm taking off too much paint now. Which, actually, I can do that. Wow, it's amazing what all you can pick up if you just look. Just look. I think what I'm going to have to do is pull my blind down over there. So I can see. Okay, this crease. And that. You know what? <clears throat> That's a little better. I pulled my blind down over here because it makes it easier for me to see my reference photo that I have on my on my computer over here. Okay. Um. So it just makes it hard because I'm seeing red tones and I don't have a color close enough to match, and it's just oh gosh. Okay, what am I looking? I'm looking at that area right there. Okay, and it's a red tone. Let me try something here. I'm seeing red. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that dark is here. This. It's white. Okay, so. Uh, it's not quite dark enough though. 
take out the car, guys. This will probably be going too red, but we'll see. Or maybe not. Just a very little touch. Okay. Put that in the seat and get that there. Right in here. Red, pink, whatever you want to call it, I'm seeing it. Okay. And then... And through... Oh, back of the hand's got some red in it too. Yeah. I'm kind of wondering if... <clears throat> Okay, let's see. This knuckle, which is, okay. there's my crease there, and the knuckle's up here, and there's a streak that goes through it that's dark. Okay. This crease. Over. Crease it dark in there. And I've got light on either side of that dark there. Very little right there. And then okay, it's the finger here. Knuckle. So I'm going way too far down. Went too far down, y'all. Alright, so let's correct that. Uh, correct it with this one, I guess. This knuckles here. That part don't fight. I'm telling you. that part.
why my paper towel gets messed up awfully quick, and I just changed that bad boy. Wow, okay. <clears throat> Another one done. Hopefully that'll help out with the Now kinds of weird. Let's try this one. Oh, I had some oil there somewhere. I just don't have one now. Hmm. finger like I do for this thumb to show the where the knuckle is at. Let's try this. Dark. Actually, let's bring it down a little bit. Okay. 
I'm not liking this one at all.
It's that stuff in Vader, I don't know. Okay. Oh, gosh. The rest of this hand's got to go lighter. It's just, it's got to go lighter. So let's try this. Helped a little bit of dust. Let's just say the dust can't paint, huh? guys so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop here and we'll finish this hand out next week rather than doing the offering hand because i'm just looking at it upside down it doesn't look bad i'm looking at it right side up i'm like totally not into it and i'm starting to get frustrated and when you start getting frustrated with the painting it's time to stop so that's what we are going to do and we'll pick this up next week i do thank you for joining me and hanging in with me this long and I am sorry that this is going to take another week to do, but then it, portraits, portraits period can take a while. So, okay guys, I don't know if I'm going to call this a postscript or if I'm just going to put it in the end of here, but at any rate, I was definitely getting frustrated trying to get this particular painting done. 
And I think one of the reasons why is I'm limited on how much time I have to spend on painting. And this one really isn't done because I was looking at it and there's a lot of blending that can be done finished out through here. There's parts of it I like, parts of it I don't like. But then I got to looking at all three of these and looking at my reference photo. And this hand here, at least in my opinion, I mean, I could be wrong, this could just be my perception. But this one here almost is starting to look more natural, if that makes any sense. And I've seen improvement each time I've done this painting. I really wish I could have stuck with these colors, these pinkish tones, which I'm sure I could grab that by using the CAD Red Medium instead of a CAD Red Light. So, as several other YouTube artists are always telling us viewers, work with what you've got. And apparently that's a lesson that hasn't got into my head yet, is to work with what I've got. I have no formal art training at all. The only art training I've ever had was when I was in school. And that was probably middle school. By high school, I was doing business classes and art just wasn't something that I felt I was good enough at. And not to mention, you know, growing up and being told that writing poetry or creating art or doing anything creative is just, you can't make a living that way. You know, that starving artist mentality shit, but excuse my French. But anyways, like I was saying, I've seen improvement between all three. This was the first one I started. And I discovered that the background, it just wasn't the right kind of background. I mean, yeah, I wanted to use rose gold, but I wasn't taking into consideration what my subject would look like on top of a rose gold. I mean, the subject itself almost vanishes into the painting and I don't want that to happen. I want this to be something that stands out. So then I went with a lighter background. Still had the rose gold added some white. So then I used acrylic colors because I didn't have every color I needed in the oils. And I knew I wanted to do this type of painting in oils. That's why I got the water, mix water mixable oils is because they're, they can be cleaned up with soap and water. I don't have to worry about turpentine or anything like that. I mean, uh, they do have a little bit of a smell, especially the, the mediums, but it's not bad. It's nothing like turpentine or whatever else you have to use. So, and then too, I didn't want to have to you know, like Bob Ross, we can beat the brush. And yeah, that's fun and everything, but I wanted something with unique point out. But at any rate. And, yeah, this painting to me looks halfway decent. It's not done. But I really can't do any more work on it because of the acrylic. And it drying out so fast. I would have to get new paint every single time I wanted to start this painting. And it's been several times because to be truthful, this is the second time I did this painting on this canvas because what I did is I did it once, didn't care for it, covered it up, and then redid it. So that's two times here, three times here, four times here. Now, like I said, I'm getting frustrated and that's because I'm limited on the amount of time I have to be able to get this painting done. I wanted to get it done in one sitting for you guys and also because I'm so new at this. But I have got to understand that Portrait art, first of all, takes a while anyways. That's just how it is. So, with that in mind, and then also looking at the fact that I feel I'm getting better each time, I found other elements in this picture that I had missed here. I found elements in this picture that I had missed in the first one. So I am improving. You can improve too. This is a journey we're taking together. I'm just hoping that you're going to hang out with me. Um, eventually I will get on camera it's just at this point I'm very self-conscious um, and I don't have a proper smile just yet still working on getting that I go back for another fitting here Monday and hopefully they will have the fitting right so that I can actually get the dentures so anyways not only that working on this I love to paint, don't get me wrong, I like to paint, I do. But writing has always been in my life, since I can remember. And doing the video poetry, I was really having a lot of fun with that. Even though, I mean, it was a little difficult, you know, getting the pictures in, getting the music picked up. 
it was difficult, but it was fun. And right now, I'm not really having fun. <laughs> I mean, I am, but I'm not. Uh, so we're, I'm going to stop here. We'll finish this painting up next week, and I promise I'll go ahead and I'll finish out the series of fans. Um, but I'm mainly going to concentrate probably on video poetry. Um, based on poems that I've written. And then hopefully, you know, be able to do paintings around the poems. Which is why I'm doing this fan series, is because this is for a poem. Uh, I just don't know a lot about color theory. I've never been able to draw. And I know I'm yammering on. And anyways. So guys, I'm glad that you joined me today. I hope that you stick around until next week. We will finish this one out. I'm hoping that it won't be completely dry. Well, let me put it this way. If it dries, I want it to completely dry. If it don't, then I want it to stay wet. <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't want it in between where I'm trying to fight with it. Um, because getting lighter with it, once I pull the lighter color down in there, it's actually not looking too bad. This will give me a break. I've got to work for the next four days. I just wanted to say that I, I think I've learned something here. I can do this kind of work, but it takes a while. And I'm not used to taking a while to do something. Now granted, like with my other paintings, my <coughs> abstracts and whatnot, they take a while to do, but that's only because I'll get so far, get to a point where I know the painting's not done, but I don't know what else it needs. So I'll put it to the side, you know, somewhere in my studio where I'm looking at it every time I come into my studio. And then eventually that painting will talk to me or speak to me and then I can finish it. Now that I've started this YouTube, or actually doing content for YouTube, I'm pressuring myself more than I probably need to. And that's because I want to be good at something. And I want you guys to, you know, learn something, anything from me, even if it's a little something. But at any rate, I guess that's all I wanted to say. I may redo this ending, who knows. I ramble on so much. So we'll see. Uh, we'll look at this painting again next week just to make sure, like I said, that it's staying together. And then we'll finish this one up. Until next week, guys. Go out and enjoy life. And try to create something beautiful. And if you can't create something beautiful, at least admire something beautiful. I'm Deb from Deb Studio. And I am the poetic artist. Crying on your shoulder, no doubt. <laughs> <coughs> so, anyway, for encouragement, you know, guys, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment or something. That would be really nice so I can get to know you guys. You all could probably get to know me. I will try to answer them. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.